Welcome to Dungeon World Filler Arc Session 2. It is the 1st of January 2020. Let's just say this is the first time we're RPing this year. And yep. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what anyone else is talking about. And here is uh, the players. Hi, I'm Adrian. And who are you playing this, Hi, this fine day? Oh, Let's okay, just, sorry. Yep, yep, I wasn't fine. sure no, I was just... mentioning that. I'm playing as a Villa Tree Bar. Nice. The Wizard. Well, which? Yeah, whatever. whatever. Gotcha. Yeah. Hi, I'm Sophie. I'm playing Kitty LaKill. Kitty LaWick. What? Kitty LaWick. <laughs> 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 I'm an what? Elf. Um, Ranger. Yep. I think I even said last time rogue. I'm like, no, yeah, wait a minute. It, that's fine. And it's what you get for using your sort of same character's name with the meme. <laughs> last but not least. I am Callum. I am playing Cavill Darkblade. Formerly Marcus Serpent Spear. Soon to be Darth <laughs> I was Lord. Go. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally going to go with Marcus Aurelius for that, but. I guess uh, we don't want that. We can't take everything. <laughs> no, we don't want that. Um, yeah, fucking hell. It's fine. We're here. Everything's brilliant. Um, hello, Scott, whenever you wake up. Um, and yeah, who remembers what happened last time? I stabbed some goblins. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've got a baby goblin I'm taking care of. Mm -hmm. It's gross. <laughs> The blade said no. Computer says no. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you three are heading back to town, to the wonderful town of Everwinter. And obviously it's chilly and whatnot, so you just want to try and get there as swiftly as possible. Uh, you just make it back. Uh, you head to the Adventuring Guild and... What's your, what's your proof you have solved the problem? Um. My goblin head. Hey. I have a goblin head. I picked one up. It's oh, in my okay. tree. Okay, okay, okay. Right. So remember, you had to have some kind of a uh, proof that, like, what was happening. So yeah, I'd say having a goblin head means you've went out and killed goblins. I mean, I guess I'll only know if they stop losing sheep, right? I mean, the baby's covered in sheep wool. That's where the sheep went. Mm -hmm. We were too. We weren't able to save him because somebody went lost the way and took us an extra day. So we've got. Um, we'll have the your contact in the guild, right? So let's come up with a name for this person. Let's see. Let's go for. A second to find something reasonable that I can probably pronounce. <laughs> Staring at the Aztec names list, no. Um, just want a bunch of different names. Why is there no button for human names for this random roller? Fair enough. Let's see what happens when I click on this. Okay, yeah. So, the contact you guys have for the guild is called Meager Moth. Right? Yeah, I know. I know. Is it a small fly? Meager Moth. Um, that is his name. He's a human, kind of big and burly. Um, like if a dwarf and a giant had a child, Meager would be like the offspring of that. Um, there's a big guy, so feel free to add this into your character log if you wish um, for additional notes, because will I remember this person? Who knows? But <laughs> that's for session two. And guild dude, meteor moth. Right, so you just turn up 
and he has an adorable speech impediment as well, which you are about to enjoy Aww. in a second. Uh, he's walking to the kind of guild hall, head up, with the obviously the the quest flyer, got to him, dump the goblin head on top of it, and he's like, "Bell, bell, bell, back so moon." Yes, and look what we brought. Ain't he cute? I slung the goblin head on the table. I just looked distastefully at the child goblin. <laughs> Otherwise known as I'm the I'm like child. cooing at it and going all like, oh, do, 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 do. And then Meager looks at both of you. And he's kind of like trying to work it out. And then he looks at uh, Kay. And he's like, I don't buy children. What's it gonna sell him to you? Excellent! And he starts like patting his hands together and then kind of looking at like the goblin blood dripping from the head onto his countertop thing. And he's just looking at a uh, Cavell. We've killed your goblins. They aren't my goblins. I demand payment. Demand? <laughs> and then he just sets the coin purse on top of the, the counter. I grab it and throw it at Kitty. Ble She's probably good with numbers. Blean this up, boy. And then he just shuffles off. And kind of like waves his hand at you and goes through the back. I need to couple of head there and walk away. <laughs> so you do what with your couple of heads? I'm looking head? Sorry, very I confused. That. No, I, I left it. I left it there. So you obviously don't want a good reputation with this guild. Okay, I I I hear you. <laughs> Rude to guild master, meager moth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they don't give me what I want, life drinker, I'll have a feast. I mean, I just feel like you don't have a whole bunch of people to back you up if this goes wrong. And this is full of swarthy, adventuring, roguish types that live in the big snowy town of Everwinter. You know? But that's fine. We'll see how that goes. Um, spend your sword, grows legs, and says, Fuck this, I'm out. <laughs> sword, back to me! <laughs> nope. <laughs> Yeet. I remember now, my name is Marcus. Okay, so yeah. You've got the coin of... Uh, the Sorry, the purse of 50 coin. Uh, that does not divide into fruit. No, but that's what the money was for the quest. I killed the most. I should have the most. We all to split things equally. After all, we all we all contributed. The the fifty coin does not split into three. Depending on basically the coin system in this, it might, but oh well. So yeah, the currency in this world is just coin. So there is no better coins or lesser Fine. coins. There is just coin. You can have 17. Or how does it... Yeah, I think that's how it's split. That works. I'll take the 17. And now I have to go find a new shield. Because mine is first. Is a kitless not? I say kitless, I say, I mean Kitty, really. Involved in this scene. Yeah, I'm just refreshing. Uh, there we go. So, what are we getting each? 17? Uh, it would be if he's taken 17. Somebody else would take 17, somebody would take 16, right? I think you two should take 16 and I should take 18. I need to fix my shield. Well, you did do most of the killing, so... I even found the child. Mm. Mm. 
for the journey back as well, I don't know if you did it last time, I don't think you did, but you saw Markov another ration. Because that mm -hmm. would have been the journey back. And somebody probably would have wanted to have tried to feed the child. So nope. me. not me. So I'm gonna mark off a, a ration for the kid as well. Two, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Cool. So you just might wish to attempt to resupply and such. Yes. Very potentially. So Is there a ration man about? A ration man? <laughs> Not, definitely not a rational man, it seems. No, I, I don't see it as rational. I just know he has rations. Mm. Right, so for the supply move, when you go to buy something with money on hand, if it's something readily available in the settlement you're in, you can buy it at the marketplace. If it's something special beyond what's usually available here, it requires a roll to see what how that goes. So, I think rations and a shield are pretty standard shit, so... Yeah. Could I repair my shield for less, or should I just buy a new shield? Mm. Did you bring your shield with you? No, I'm pretty sure I just tossed it aside, because it was basically useless. Yeah, so... So I think that answers that question. So I can get one ration and a shield. <laughs> I don't know. How much do shields cost? Let's have a look. Fifteen. Oof, someone's reading ahead. <laughs> Good. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I was looking at the shield in my inventory and like, I'm pretty sure it's not equipped, so it's fine. But it does say fifteen co coins. Yeah, that's most likely going to be what it costs. And I'm going to have a quick look at the inventory on my book and to see if it's the same, but it probably is, let's face it. Why it would be different, I do not know. Yeah. Where the inventory is, I do not know either. Where the fuck is it in this book? It is at the back, I think. Equipment. Perfect. Right, so it's armor, really. Yeah, 15 coin. Yep, so you can just buy one if you want your one. As for rations, they cost whatever it costs on your, your list. Will be listed there. Um, as stuff. I think dungeon rations are three coins for one. Yeah, for one set of five. Oh, okay. Happy days. Yeah. Awesome. I'm gonna get. I want five dungeon rations and a new shield. That requires all my coins. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna re-equip the shield then. Oh wait, is there a shield vendor? I imagine there's some sort of yeah, no, like yeah, shield. like shield. Shield's not super rare, right? Cool. You make up a shield and some rations. Is anybody else buying anything? Just more rations. Cool. Yeah, so, rations! So, so I, should I just put this up to seven uses instead of two then? No. I want you to put a... Leave what's at two, at two and add a new block in because the weight is what's important. Okay. Yep. Same goes for you two as well. If you want to add in to drag and drop another set of dungeon rations onto your sheets, please do so if you want. Oh, okay. Yep. Is anybody buying anything that isn't rations? Besides the shield? Nah, I'm out of money now. Like... What was that? Does it show as dungeon rations or no? Yeah, it should be I dungeon rations. rations. Oh, okay. Should still do go to the compendium and just type in rations, yeah, that's what I did. How much are the rations? Uh, three coins for five. Okay, so that's, that's 13 coin I have left. It did not like me having that popped out to do the drag and drop. No, it never will. Never. So, never do that, ever. <laughs> I could have sworn it used to do it on the other game. It, it also won't like it though. Like, you might get away with it, but see... As soon as it decides to like desync the windows, or if it's got a bunch of multiple like, multiple windows popped out, it'll just yeah. have a freak out. Remember, I once tried to drag and drop something onto a sheet for a player in the dungeon crawl, and I had three enemy sheets open, and everything just decided to share. Oh, God. And I went, "Oh, this is bad." <laughs> so I had like player <laughs> characters with breath weapons out of nowhere and shit like that, and I was like, "Oh, it's all gone pot." But anyway, um. Things that you can get, so obviously adventuring gear is a thing you can get if you had 20 coins. Bandages, um, you can buy bandages here, which are 5 coins, and you get 3 uses out of them. Um, 
when you have a few minutes to bandage someone else's wounds, heal them of 4 damage and expend a use. Um, health wise, if you, you would have taken rest for one night, which means half of your maximum HP can be recovered. So anyone that's taken damage, whatever half of your total HP is, you can add that on. If that makes sense. Um, what did I do? Uh, well, my total HP is 23. So half of that is what? 12? 11? 11, isn't it? So you can add 11 health back Oh, I'm on. back up to 23 then. Lols. There you go. The bandages cost 5 or...? Bandages cost 5 coins and they have 3 uses. Thank you. And they're slow, so it takes a long time to do that, but you can heal somebody for 4 damage and mark off sure. it. You've also got, instead of bandages, you've got poultice and herbs, which are 2 uses instead of 3. They're also slow. They cost 10, but they'll heal for 7 mm. instead of 4. And you'd need to roll for the healing potion, it's a bit rare, but you could look for healing potions, but they're 50 coins, and they heal for 10. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay for now. Okay, okay. Uh, everybody I got bandages, I'm not getting poultices, fuck it. Yeah. Uh, as for that... Right, nobody needs any new bonds, do you? These are all good for bonds, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool, that works for me. Right, what do you do now? Right, just go back to the quest board, just rest up, or like somebody has a baby goblin. So, what what's the plan, gang? Um, I don't know. I guess I'll go to the quest board, see if there's anything else up there worth doing. Yeah, I think a lot of it depends on like how far you're wanting to travel because you've got like nearby shit and you've got like the the far away going on a fucking adventure trek stuff, right? So yeah. it just depends what you're, what, I guess, what you're looking for, right? Well, I'd be fine doing whatever, but mm -hmm. I have a feeling if well, we got to be taking a fucking gremlin along with us, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, maybe that's a conversation he's going to have then, right? Maybe you go up to the, go to the... Like, maybe they two go and sit down after, like, buying their new stuff and restocking. And let's say it's, like, in the kind of... the common room of the Adventuring Guild, right? Um, you know, obviously the Super Secret Membership Lounge. And I guess Sibylla's there looking after Boblin, the Goblin. And uh, <laughs> you've got a... Uh, Cavell there, probably just like checking the weight of his shield and stuff, and occasionally touching his sword. And then, yeah, you head up to go get a quest, and maybe you stop halfway and think, wait a minute, should I be picking this based on the goddamn gremlin? So, maybe you head back and actually discuss that with him. Trudge over to him, I guess. Mm. Right. So, there's a few things we can do locally, or there's a few things we can do a bit further out. What are we doing about that? And I just point very distastefully at the child. I think the little bubble of his nose pops as you do that. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> so gross. <laughs> I quite frankly don't want that on our adventures. That is a hindrance. It'll make noise. It'll give away our positions if we're trying to hide. Well, I couldn't just leave it there to die. Yes, you could. But that's not nice. We're not nice. Speak for yourself. I just figured there'd be somebody that would want to take care of it, maybe at the local... I'm not thinking stables, I'm thinking kind of like a petting zoo sort of thing. <laughs> My god. I mean, 
this is animal a... shelters. <laughs> right, so this is a town, right? So it's relatively relatively self sufficient, right? It's not quite a city, right? But it's a town. Yeah. It's not a village, right? So it's got a bunch of stuff, which is good. It's probably like the most important building here though is probably the Adventuring Guild Lodge, right? So maybe a couple of churches, depending on religions. So yeah. I, I mean, surely religious people would take care of it. Right. So sorted. <laughs> religious people. I'd be happy to go and, uh, and 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 speak to some of them and see if any of the you know churches, monasteries, whatever would. Oh sweet Jesus! Yeah, take the literally. poor orphan. <laughs> I was just thinking if a certain someone was here. Right. Could have been taken to the <laughs> ah, my apprentice. <laughs> oh, crap. You will rise to the ranks of the Sith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Scott, I mean, you let us all down. Especially Boblin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could always pay somebody to watch the thing for you until you're back, right? But how long will that be? Yeah, don't know, we right? don't know what we're gonna do. But 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 yeah, I imagine would you have, did that, and then you all died on the adventure. In a <laughs> or whatever, exactly. <laughs> um, um, surely there's some rich kid here that could use a pet, right? An exotic pet. Um, I mean, do you want to try and look for something like that? Is yes. That, right. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what the hell that would be. Right. What would we be looking for? Let me try to find. I think. Yeah. So in this scenario, right? Roll defy danger with charisma. <laughs> okay. Right. And we'll we'll explain. We'll explain as we go. Let's see how good or bad this so, is. Let me... Also, that fucking name, meager moth. Bullshit names. <laughs> Oh, so, so he's based I'll on Brian Bedondi, I hope he's not. With okay, sorry, charisma. I can't remember exactly how this works, so I just press on the phone. So, click on Defy Danger and it should prompt you. Aha! Yes. So, mark a point of experience. Oh. Yay. Okay. So, you go around asking people, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. About, you know, do you know of them that would, you know, be looking for, you know, a kid or a pet or a project, right? However, mm -hmm. Sibylla would put it, you know? You yeah. You ask a bunch of people and, um,. It goes really badly, and <laughs> you... Are people starting to throw rotten food at me? No. So you head round, so you're kind of moving between the slightly better part of town, and mm -hmm. obviously like where the adventuring hall is, because the adventuring hall thing is just like, it's near one of the entrances, like the, the east or the west entrance, um, probably the east entrance, and then mm -hmm. the west where like maybe the rich people live, and uh, or the richer people, I guess. People that have tried to get like a, a mountain hideaway and other people came and lived near them and built a town around them and probably <laughs> ruined their, their view. So you're leaving like the the kind of rich neighbourhood, heading back to the the guild hall having no success. And you get attacked by mm. what seems like masked strangers. And oh. uh, they mutter some random things. Um, like they kind of push you over and whatnot. They take the goblin and they run mm. out of town. Bye bye. Bye. Goblin. So, what do you I do? Look I look at them too and go, "That's one problem dealt with." Well, so keep in mind, guys, she's on her own. Oh, she's on her own. Oh. Yeah. Oof. Um. Maybe, maybe they. They had a reason to take him. Maybe, maybe they knew his family. And I'm just like nodding to myself. So before, like before we go into this, to... though, I'll let you know what they were, 
mumbling, shall I? Oh. We have the chosen one. Let's go so we can get paid. Shit. <laughs> right? Is that again? <laughs> See, guys, I knew, we, I knew we should have kept the kid. You guys should have protected it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. So, you're on your ass on the snow in the street after that happened. I think we have that scene of you like looking up as you sit up and then a bit of snow falling off one of the roofs and hitting you in the head. I am. Um, so, do you head after the masked men or do you go back to the guild hall? What do you do? I'll first try to head after them. At least see where they're going. Not necessarily like barge in, but if I can see tracks in the snow to figure out which way they went and if I see which house they went into, I might just... Yeah, so you want to roll discern realities to have a nosy around? Uh, roll what, sorry? Discern realities. Ooh. Ooh. What'd you get? It says 11. Good, yeah. So, let's go for it. Yeah, that's the exact scene. <laughs> okay, let me just look through it. I think the most one of the most useful ones would be what should I be on the lookout for? As in, do I see tracks in the snow? Do I see, you know, which way they went? That sort of thing. Yeah, so so you get to ask three of these. So the first one you're asking is what should I be looking look out for? So uh -huh. yeah, like the fact that there's footprints in the snow, right? So you should probably look for obviously their footprints, blah, 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 and where they lead, right? Uh, you should in theory also be on the lookout for like more of yeah, them. Yeah, people right? are looking at me, yeah. Uh, what else do you want to ask? Cause you get to ask three. Um, I think who's really in control there could, could, would help us in if there was one of them that seemed more like a leader if he looked in a specific way that I could that Yeah, definitely. Like the, him. the one that um, was the one that actually grabbed the kid from you. Yeah, they definitely seemed the best dressed, right? They all seemed in kind of like, you know, dark clothing, like ragged kind of clothing. Um, but they definitely seemed like they, they looked like the adventuring type. Right. Hmm. So there's a chance that I might know stuff from them from the guild. Okay. Maybe. Um. I'm genuinely confused about which one to ask again. You don't have to ask them all if you don't want to. It's just you can ask. Um. Uh, you just did well enough to ask them all. Is there anything, like, what here is useful or valuable to me? Is there anything that I would have, like, noticed that, that that could, like, help me right now? Realistically, right, the most useful of everything is the, the footprints. So you want to act on them quickly before further snowfall yeah. covers the tracks. Yeah. So following them obviously will be useful. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it's the valuable part is that you need to do it quickly. Yeah. If that makes sense before snowfall covers it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll try to do that. I'll try to follow them. And with the certain realities, sometimes the answers might not be great because there's probably little to work with in the scene. So we'll do what we can. Um but yeah, so you run off, right? And you follow the footsteps or the footprints, sorry, in the snow. You mm -hmm. Like is Sibylla a bit like is she kind of frantic about this, or is she taking her time methodically, or like how is she doing? Because we know that her discern realities is great, right, from the eleven that you rolled. So, yeah. like, are you flustered, and that's why you're able to pick up on all these things, or are you like a last minute study session at night, you know, before the exam type idea, where your brain needs to do it, so it has to go into like high adrenaline mode, or is it the fact that 
you're like secretly totally in control and the craziness and loopiness is a bit of a ruse and you're looking around studying everything really Sherlock levels of detail. I do I do like to think that she's a lot more like together than people realize mm-hmm. in some ways. Yeah. So especially now that it's made, you know, well not easy, but you know what I mean, like there are clear tracks to follow. She's like, well, it's clear. I need to follow the tracks and then, mm-hmm. you know, just gets up and follows the tracks like anybody would do. Uh if there was for example like one set of tracks in the snow and they just you know they have to follow them. So if she's able to discern exactly which ones are there, she's just going to follow them. Probably not frantically, because obviously she doesn't want them to know they're being followed, but also doesn't want to lose them. So, you know, even following them intends to keep a little bit of distance. Mm -hmm. So, you follow the tracks, they lead out of the west gate of the town. Oh. So they lead off into the like, kind of wilderness of the mountains. Was that towards where we we, we found the like which way we did No, the so they the... like that would have been out the east gate. Oh okay. So they're heading like the total opposite direction. Um oh. yeah. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah, so I'll um So you could essentially follow on However, you'd be alone. Or you could head back and debrief your colleagues, as it were, but that might then need immediate action to try and pick up the trail again. Yeah. Like, if you've left at any period of time, you would lose them because of the snowfall, which isn't particularly heavy, but it's constant, which is the problem. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll try to race back to where they are and try to... Yeah. Catch them, catch on with them, and get them to help. Yeah, so like, I think it's obviously like some sort of quest that they were sent on, so you know, if they don't care about the kid, they might care about the money. Right. So they. I think, yeah, we collected back to the guild hall. Used two weren't doing it. Like, in fact, were used to doing anything specific when she was off, like, trying to punt this child away? No, probably just examining what would be worth our time doing on the board. Yeah, and I think, like, as I said, without going into the specifics of what quests or what, it is primarily a choice of something nearby, inexpensive and super dangerous, something far away, expensive and super dangerous, or something that pays crap, but is easy, far away or near, right? That's the kind yeah. of main categories of quests is near, far, wherever you are. Wherever you are. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so maybe you're perusing what the best thing is and maybe you're doing that thing where you're kind of standing tough at the board and other people come up and look at quests and you're doing that thing where you're like, well, I want the last loaf of bread, so you can yeah. have it. Yeah, I get what you mean. Uh, right, and then I think there's just this thud as the door smashes open um, and the, the big wave of cold comes in to like the kind of big fireplace lit room and it's uh, Sibylla, right? I'd be oh, like good, rid of the trying trail. to catch my breath and be like, no, I didn't get rid of it. It was stolen. And they're saying something about how they're going to get money out of it. So I think somebody really wants the child. I think it's valuable. We need to find it. We need to get it back and, and see who wants it. Because if, if it's like his family that wants it, that, then obviously we should get the reward, not the others. So we should go follow them, see where they went. Now... Well, if there's money involved, <laughs> might as well. They are an enemy. They have stolen something from us. Their life shall end. I love like, just this grave voice fills the room. The fire flickers slightly. It's like, they have become <laughs> our enemy now. <laughs> I just trudge back over, grab my belongings that I'd left maybe on the table, and like, all right, what direction? Lead the way. Go Let's on. Go. Yes. I just feel the phrase "lead the way" given by Kitty to Sybil is the just <laughs> like when we go back to yeah. how did you meet your mother? Okay, so I said lead the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So do you want to head off and like try and chase them? Yeah, try to like 
find that trail again. Yeah. Um, so, you head back to the west gate, right? So you take them back to where you find it. So you cross town again, which is a yeah. decent size. And obviously, it's there are no more tracks in town, right? They're all gone now because of the snow. Yeah. But obviously, you know the tracks led off into like the wilderness, the woods, like off to yeah. the west. So, yeah. You could maybe, like, if you are fast enough, you could maybe pick up the trail or, like, try and get the fact that it's maybe the tree canopy might have stopped some of the snow covering up the tracks. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? So, that's what I'd be hoping for. Yeah. Uh, take it, everybody else is following suit on this merry, yeah. merry re adventure. Yes. Oh, look crazy enemies, person. <laughs> is a uh, Cavell less than the full health? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. And that is after you've already healed your day's rest of in between this, right? No, I haven't done that. Okay. I feel like I missed that. How did you get 14 after the acid bath? Did you... Like, what did you use to get that health back? Potion. Cool, yeah, so you're still due. Him. You're still due. Oh uh, yeah, but you healed him for like one, I think, did you not? Oh shit, yeah. Which was glorious because it was still healing. <laughs> yeah, so it's half of your health you can heal, like half of your total health. So you should have uh, that as uh, well. That'd be 12, right? 12, yeah. Okay, that's cool. Because you've got 25 health. So you should be full again, I think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm full. Cool. Good. Yeah. So, how do you want to follow the tracks, right? How do you want to try and like pick up a clue and such again? What's your What's your plan here, Sibylla, leading, leading the I way? I would just be be looking, you know, where I knew they were, and just just look if there's been any, you know, if there's any little bits that that perhaps haven't been covered by snow. I could maybe get my wolf to have a sniff. Mm -hmm. yeah, or so. that. Yeah, so what is your wolf's um, abilities? Remember we had um, this conversation about what it, what you trained it to do? So it has got um, quick reflexes, intimidating and stealthy. So you never gave it tracking? No. <laughs> okay. Did it have tracking? I think so. Yeah. Um. Let's have a look at what it could do. So where are we here? What can you do with it? So no, you can track, right? So and you track, right? So that is a it's a cunning it's cunning you'd add to the rule. So how does that work? Where are we going? Hunt and track. It's a ranger move and it can help you with it. There we go. Nice. So that's what we're oh yeah, do. literally yeah. right above my freaking animal. Yeah. Duh. So I'll just click that then. Uh, right, so you get to add its cunning to it as well. So what is the cunning of your, your doggo? One. Yeah, plus one. Cool. So yeah. Oops. Excuse you, sir. <laughs> Randomly just, I am also armoured. <laughs> <laughs> I ignore the clumsy tech. <laughs> oh my. So seven. That's such a close call. Oh what he's God. saying that while we're like, you know, tracking and everything, he's just clunking around and just not being really useful, but obviously looking menacing and making tin man noises. <laughs> Aren't you glad that dog gives you a plus one to this? Oh yeah, we because, right, on a 7 plus you follow the creature's trail until there's a significant change in direction or mode of travel. Right? So, use head off into the woods. Right? It is probably quite early in the day, I think, still. Because I think usually they've got up in the morning, travelled back. So, yeah, it only was about a day away, that cave. So, I think it's quite early. It's maybe just before, like, about 11 if it had our clock. So, his head off and 
it starts to go into like a kind of twisted like a lot of the trees here are obviously like kind of evergreen style trees um mm. however this is like a completely bare forest but the branches oh. like the the trunks go up like twice the height of like a normal tree and the <laughs> branches all like spiral out as they normally would for a normal tree but none of them have leaves but they're so thick with branches they all kind of like form this weird canopy and thick with two seas yeah <laughs> so yeah and we'll call it thickwood because you know <laughs> that that's the, the level of maturity we're at isn't it <laughs> so party track the child to thick with two c's wood <laughs> so t-h-i-c-c-w-o-o-d thickwood um in this particular wood, um, the, there are like bushes that grow next to the trees, but it makes it look like the trees are twerking when the wind blows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you're horrible. <laughs> I mean, I think you've realised you're the good person out of this group, and they both are horrible, so... <laughs> um, yeah, the party track would be... I've spelled that wrong, the child too, I think would... Uh, west of... Ever winter. <laughs> yup. This is the game we're making. Um, right, so you get in there and the tracks become a bit harder to follow, right? Because the snow hasn't fallen as much in here. It's um, because of the canopy, the kind of dark canopy of thick wood. Mm -hmm. However, does somebody want to spout lore. Does any of you know about Thickwood? Because I mean, you're adventurers, right? You've done stuff. Just... I mean, I'm a ranger elf with a wolf. I think I should know about woods. It's another bunch of trees to me. Uh, sure, that's good enough for me. Then do you want to do spout lore for me, Sophie? Okay, okay. So you get a... Also, I don't know if it mattered or not, but you obviously did succeed at that last roll, so you don't add XP for your hunting track. You didn't, I assume, because it was a success. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I haven't. Cool. I, I figured that. It was just because it came up with a six. I'm like, I wonder if it in her brain has told her to put XP down. It's fine. No. Because her doggo would definitely give you a helping handle. So, <laughs> for thick wood. <laughs> right. The thick wood was artificially made. There you go. Fake trees. I mean, they're definitely real trees, right? No, yeah, they are fake been, trees. Been sped up with the growth cycle, I'm guessing. So it's like they've not naturally been made. Right. And the result you got was a seven or nine, which is neat. And the GM will tell you, sorry, will only tell you something interesting. It's on you to make it useful. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, like, my character will go up to a tree, examine it. Obviously, it's the real tree because, you know, I can touch it, but it's like it hasn't fully developed despite being as tall as it is. So, it'll look a bit. I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's, it's almost like it's got stretch marks from growing too fast. I don't know how, like, the, yeah, the no, trunks. Yeah, I get it, yeah. Work. Like, it's almost like um, you've got parts of the tree that almost look polished because of the the way the wood's like been forced scarred. into. Mm. Yeah. Um, like, where trees could, like, grow knots in, like with time and obviously, like, just lay up their thickness, as it were. Yeah. Um, there are parts <laughs> of this that are, like, almost like polished wood, as it were. Yeah. God, there's so many jokes you can make with this one. So many. I guess this is the innuendo quest. Um <laughs> So, yeah, you have that. How do you know this? Is it just your time as an elf that lets you know this, or...? Yeah, it's like the my clan are very nature oriented, mm -hmm. so we basically know all trees and stuff that are known to mm -hmm. people, yeah. I guess. Um, 
Yeah. And this is... Yeah, and these are like, the they're definitely trees, but they're definitely like... not... A forest shouldn't yeah. be like this. This was made. Yeah. This seems like it was made by someone. Definitely. But for what purpose? Exactly. Mm. Mm. Parties, probably, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> D&D campaign. Yeah. <laughs> And other such role playing systems are available. <laughs> um, so, what do you say to the group when you discover uh, that? I, well, I turn to them after touching up a tree. Um, so, I don't know why, but this forest isn't natural. Like, it, it wasn't intentionally meant to be here. Like, maybe it would have been in a few decades, but it's it's been sped up. I don't know why. Hmm. They are just trees. <sighs> okay. <laughs> well, I just... Insightful cover. Shake my head. Just... Wave him off, kind of like ah, people. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then I guess try and continue on with the search. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you head further into the deeper parts of Thickwood, and uh, it's just brilliant, isn't it? Who's taking point? It's probably you, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Cavellate, you're taking up the rear, as it were, because you're mm -hmm. you're kind of obviously wanting to defend everybody from the back, and we'll probably have Sibylla in the middle. Me in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you probably want to keep close to uh, Kitty being like, right, cool. Uh, have we found yeah, him yet? Like, are we, are we going yet? the right way? Are we mm -hmm. going the right way? You sure? Definitely. And there's a part of the of the woods that kind of start to. It almost forms a clearing, but really it's just that the space between the trees is getting bigger. Because obviously the canopy and mm -hmm. stuff, there's no clearing as such. It's quite dark actually in here. Um, only some some light is coming through, um, even though it is only like you know 11 or whatever in the morning. So it's quite dark, quite very much like a, any generic scene of someone tracking some animal through the woods and it's got the overcast canopy effect going mm. with the rays of sun coming through and some of the as I said there's like big gaps between the trees and when you start to like follow it around you see that there's almost a circle where the trees stop and have space Mm. And in the centre of which is a larger tree that sits on its own. Hmm. A big tree. How large are we talking? Are we talking like there could be a house in the tree trunk or just a chunky tree? I mean, I guess a halfling could build a house in the tree. How many seeds does this tree have? How many seeds does this tree have? Yeah, how thick is this tree? <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, if the thick went to double C, this is probably a triple C. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'd say quadruple C is probably what would support a house, right? So we're mm. probably at triple C. God damn. Double C is easily, easily tree house, right? As opposed to tree estate. <laughs> Q and David Ab Attenborough of this world <laughs> commenting about the triple C tree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as you will find in this part of the woods, the triple C tree. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you do? Well, Cavell falls over unconscious. Yeah, <laughs> he does. <laughs> it's just because he's BRBing. <laughs> but yeah, so you two are up front. He's keeping edgy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, can we feel anything magical coming from the tree? Hey, I don't know. What do you have that would let you know that? <laughs> mm. Can you detect magic? Um. I don't think. Well, I can discern realities, but 
Hmm. It wouldn't really tell you if anything was magic though, unless it said, no. like, unless like there was, I know, a sword just lying on the ground constantly on fire, and you'd be like, hmm, maybe that's a magic sword. <laughs> maybe. Do you know what I mean? Maybe. Like, just maybe. Maybe. maybe just dipped in oil, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. Hmm. I think we'll just assess the area. Do we like, sense any? I mean, you do. You do literally have a wizard with you. Yep. I mean, what would I be able to do to figure this out, though? Do you have the spell detect magic? No. Oh, it's the spell! Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. I don't know, do you? I'm just um, asking. Like. <laughs> no, I don't, but now I know what it is that would be able to tell me that. Okay, no. Mm -hmm. No, certainly. So, I mean, like, obviously, for example, Kitty could obviously... If you've got the thoughts that something might be magical, you could maybe turn to your wizard and address her. Yeah, I mean, I'll ask about... Can you detect any magic coming from this tree? No. That's not really something I do. <laughs> I love how you I don't know that. if it has any or not. <laughs> no, kind of like, you know, I don't bother like no, reading I objects love it. or whatever. I 100% like. love it because you know in the TV show of this, <laughs> when you go, you've managed to track them all the way into this scary tree clearing, even though there's no clearing. And you turn around and go, do you detect any magic? No, that's not something I do. Aren't you the wizard? Yeah, I don't bother with that stuff, though. <laughs> <so. laughs> what it. is your function? <laughs> Why are you? Well, not with that specific one, at least. Mm -hmm. Love it. Meanwhile, all this is happening. Uh, Carol comes from behind a tree, like zipping up a sort of fly, or like maybe butted in something, <laughs> tying a lace for his pantaloons. Yeah. Lovely. Having just relieved thyself, yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah. It's fine. Yep. Mm hmm Um Yeah. Does a Cavill have anything to add to the why is there a tree on its own in the middle of the woods? Its branches not go up into the canopy as well, right? Um But yeah, as I said, there's still this weird eerie circle between the roots of the trees at the edges, the roots of the big tree, and when you look up as well, you see that the canopy that all tries to inter like weave with each other, there is a line yeah. of a gap, not much, maybe like a foot or less, between the thick branches that come off of this tree that go up and out, and the branches that go up and out of the other trees at the edges, so they don't actually touch. Can I swing my sword at this like space in front of us? Yeah. I imagine it's a hack and slash. No, you just wave your sword in front. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then to do it to you, there is no barrier. Cool. <laughs> I guess we'll take a, a walk forward. Yeah. yeah. So you step kind of out of the the trees circle into this what we'll call the clearing, and uh, yeah, you're there, and then again, maybe about 15 feet or something away from you, there's this tree, this big huge tree in the middle, a triple C tree. <laughs> I, w I want to stab the tree. Yeah. And you wonder why you ruin your weapons and stuff? <laughs> I never ruin my weapons. So, yeah. as you head forward, sword in hand, right, yeah. and describe what we see if we're watching the TV show, right up into the point where you swing. I just walk toward the tree, kind of in like a lifeless walk, it doesn't look like I've got the intent to swing or attack the tree. Just as I get into arms reach us, the tree, a quick thrust into the tree. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. Uh, do I do a hack and slash? Oh, that's a big trend in it. Ah, oh, look at me, I'm a fucking beast. Nice. <laughs> so, you roll your damage. Uh, 
Uh, and I, I won't push forward. It's just a tree. Mm -hmm. So I do the extra step. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to do it. It's fine. No, I just want to deal my damage. So that is all. You just want to take the four. You don't want to yes. do the extra d6 to a tree. Uh, it's just a tree. Clearly a lonely fucking tree as well at that, but you're like, I'll hit this triple C thick boy. Yep. Who wouldn't know right? I made my mark. I'm only making my mark. I'm not here to obliterate the tree cheese. So, <laughs> you go in, you swing at the tree. Thrust. Thrust at the tree. Technically you hack a slash, but yeah, okay, so you thrust at the tree. And, uh, yeah, you stab into it. And the thing, as you stab in, it's like a like a proper strong thud, and like the kind of vibration goes up the blade a little bit, to the point where it's almost as if you're not sure if the blade is like thrumming with energy, or if it was just the impact from the tree, uh, like as if to say this is definitely a thick boy. But yeah, the ground beneath you, roots, start to grow up like behind you, like three different roots that come up to your height behind you, and they're slowly knitting together, as if they're trying to form a enclosure of some kind. Ah. Oh, are they oh. trying to trap me? I don't know, you could ask them. I do not ask questions, I swing my blade. Cool. So are you gonna... Gonna slash at these roots? They are magical and d disturbing. Go for it. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Nice. And I'll leave it at that. Wait. Nah, fuck it. Let's roll on a d6. Okay. I have to take these roots. So, what's that total? Uh, 12. 12. Cool. Uh, let me do the maths here. You take 12 points of damage. No! Cool. So you open it yourself to attack. So what is it you do that exposes yourself while you attack the roots that are coming out of the ground as well? Um, I would say lack of a stance. I won't be ready to defend myself. Yeah, because it's a tree, it's, it's right? Surprise. Yeah, it's a tree. I'm just swinging my sword at this point. Cool. I need you to roll the damage that you take for me, right? So roll a d10. Cool. You take Ow. that and it has piercing one, so it ignores one point of your armor. I take eight then. Yeah, because you've got two armor, don't you? Yeah, I've got two armor. Cool. Yeah. So this thing just lashes out. So you've got your back to the, the big tree trunk now and you swing round to get these roots, like these three kind of, you know, as I said, roots that shoot up out of the ground to try and start tangling you up. And you cut at them quite quite easily, right? You cut them pretty well. Your, your sword's bitching. So, and then just another branch comes right down and smacks you across the back. Um, on this tree. Yeah. So what do you still do is you just watch him be attacked by a tree. I'm kind of like looking and I'm like, he's kind of doing it to himself. I mean, I mean you know. That was quite a bad a bad roll, right? Like that was a lot of damage. So he took, so he probably like got staggered to a degree. Like, you know, he got knocked off his balance and shit like that. Um, so yeah, he's, your teammate is being attacked is what I'm saying. Stop attacking the tree. <laughs> oh God, we're going like to be attacking the tree then. Kind of like send my wolf in to retrieve him, seeing if he's fallen over. I can just like grab, like get him to grab onto. He's, not, he's not fallen over. He's just like he's been knocked like you know hard enough that he staggered a bit, right? Um, yeah. It didn't look like he successfully defended a, or parried a hit with a, a, an opponent of equal quality. This looked like a tree hit him. So, yeah. So he's like your wolf wouldn't have anything to drag except just chew out his leg. So. <laughs> Um, but you could attack the tree if you wanted to use your wolf to attack it. No, well. I ain't attacking that thing. <laughs> I ain't attacking nature. Yeah, right. 
like weirdly fast growth or not. I ain't mm. attacking that shit. Yeah. What about you, Sibylla? I'll be. Remember, any I'll time, be any time spent on this is not time finding the the child. So. Yeah, I'll I'll try to like, like you know, kind of like try to grab him out of there and be like, "Oh, come on! What are you doing? We're wasting time, and you're fighting trees." So is your plan? Tree is an enemy. So is your plan to give him aid so he can defy danger? I guess yeah, yeah, I could do that. Cool. Anything that gets him out of here quicker. Cool. So let's go over and we'll do aid. And that is that your roll plus the number of bonds you have with the person you're trying to help. So that would be one. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's 2d6 plus one. So you can click aid. I'm trying to find it. It's on your moves list. Parley defense prop, lower last breath, prepare spells while they fight. Ah, aid or interfere. Okay, cool. Gotcha. Oh dear. At least you get XP. I don't know why you rolled it twice, but Did yeah. Did that work? Okay. So it didn't give me the noise, so usually it gives a noise that, that makes me think that it worked, so. so... Mark a point of XP. Oopsie. Mm -hmm. And as you run in, like, I guess shouting at him, one of the branches just comes down and picks you up off the ground. Oh god! So, Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, swinging at roots that are shooting out of the ground and being smacked by branches on his back then Sibylla goes and runs in to try and help him saying you shouldn't anger trees and then she's just picked up by another branch so she's off the ground like by her waist um, and I'd probably be like hey I'm trying to help you Mr. Tree <laughs> what do you do kitty with this debacle <laughs> staring at this mess <laughs> The child was really better off without you guys to it. Try to think what. Mm. Also. Hmm? Mm. I have a napkin with tits on. Uh. What a great thing to say. <laughs> what? Don't distract her. She's trying to roleplay. Got a napkin. Tits. <laughs> okay. I was just really confused, like what you were saying. I had tits. Um, I could try and defy danger. To what end? What danger are you currently in? Well, I'll be putting myself in danger trying to rescue these idiots. So that isn't <laughs> defy danger because the goal is to rescue them, right? Oh. So you'd want to, it's basically what Sibylla did, right? So you're going to try and aid someone, which will give them yeah. a plus one to defy danger, right? So that's really what you want to do. So you... Okay. Who would you like to aid? <laughs> the um, one hanging from the tree? Or the one, like, kind of being, like, pulled down? The one hacking down? and slashing since he's actually done damage to it. Wow, <laughs> okay. Yep, cool. So. Thanks. In what way are you aiding him? I'm just gonna literally drag him out of distance of the tree, like yeah. So hopefully. like you try and head and then try and like pull him out. Um, yeah. Like through the roots and stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So you rolled, and what was your plus bond? Is it just a one with him? Yeah. Um, I well, don't. That's know. how many bonds you have with him. So. It's the one. Oh, yeah. just the one. Yeah. So that's an eleven that you got, um, which is nice. Doesn't change the result though, it's still just uh, like a, a very good success. Right, so they get a plus one or a minus two, your choice. Really though, you've said you're aiding, so it's a plus one. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it depends, Cavill, she's trying to pull you out. Uh, so if you wanted to find danger to escape the, the reach of the tree, you can by trying to do a defy danger. Um, you could do it with strength if you wanted, I guess, right? Power through? Yeah. Yeah. Like, she's trying to pull me, mm -hmm. so yeah. I just I look at her and I'm like, okay. Yep. I'm in a bit of trouble. 
I guess she wants us out of here. So I kind of like start sprinting to the edge. Um, if she's like next to me, I don't know. She could probably keep up. She's an elf. So to, well, to be fair, her. the scene is that you're kind of wrapped in, or like these like vines that keep like, or vines I say roots keep coming up around you as you're hacking at them, and you're being hit by branches on your back and sides and stuff. So she's coming in to like pull you out of the soon to be forming root cage. Um, so like you can like blast through it with strength. You can try and kind of dodge with your way through it. But either oh, way, it involves I was like yeah. Either way, it involves Kitty being there pulling at you. It's power. So defy danger, strength. Yes. And that's an eleven. <laughs> Nicely done. I'm good at rolling dice. So yeah, you two get to safety, right? You get to like the edge of the circle, as it were. Um, you don't know how far back the range of this thing is. You've just moved there because that seemed sensible. Yeah. So is so Sibylla's like at the minute? Does she have one like branch just? Grabbing? It just looks like parts of the the tree that go up and arc into this big, huge, huge canopy. It's just like obviously came down out of the mass of branches and just like swung around, picked her up by the waist, and is just like suspending her midair. She's about, like she's about ten feet in there. Is it like? Sharp rocks around. Depends. What are you thinking? I want to throw it at the roots or the branches that are taken well, personally, away. Personally, I think we should just wait and see what happens because it's not being attacked anymore and she didn't go in there with a weapon drawn? Question mark? <laughs> no, I wouldn't have. Yes, Mark, what do you think about the situation? <laughs> <laughs> Mark's you're... actually the tree's name. <laughs> <If you're... laughs> <laughs> Mark no, the parlay with the tree. <laughs> you might have to. <laughs> it might be parlaying with you. Stop attacking me, I'll give you your wizard back. Um, yeah, so like... <laughs> can, can I, I think the best the course tree? of action is to wait and see if it like calms the heck down. Okay. What is Sibylla doing swinging from the tree? And you just seem Kitty run underneath you and then pull Cavill to safety. I'll be like, guys, don't let me here! Don't leave me here! Just and stay calm. Also, Just Mr. Tree, like, put me down. I'm not hurting maybe you. <laughs> like, maybe try and gently pet the tree. I don't know. <laughs> so, Sibylla swinging very gently from side to side in this branch. I mean, window. how comfortable I am, because, you know, if it's very comfy, then if it's swinging it's gently, um, I might like it here. <laughs> Well, it depends. Like, have you ever tried to climb a tree and then you've kind of like used that, like, just under your diaphragm to like rest on as you're like trying to heave you the rest of your body up onto the tree? Ow, yeah, yeah so it's probably not very nice. comfy. So I'll be like, um, please put me <laughs> down if you can understand me. And then you have, you start to hear like a rumbling, as like you know some time passes where nobody has swung at the tree, and there's a rumbling, and like the. A big twisted body of the tree starts to like untwist and it like moves around as if it was like turned away from you and it turns around and there's like it looks like a mouth the way the kind of um, hole in the tree is where it's like a kind of upside down D and it looks quite um, warped and it look if you look inside it's got what looks like teeth but they're all wooden as if they've been carved and then oh no. parts of the, the tree above the kind of hole in it start to open and there's two of them that open up and they blink and their eyes look around and then they both focus on the group as you're all in this kind of cone of vision. Uh, Sibylla hanging obviously from the tree yeah. and used to having pulled to the, the outskirts and it just says oh, hi. in a big rumbly voice Why have you come to my forest? Well, you see, we're looking for this this little thing, this little dude that was stolen from us, we call him Boblin, but he's actually a goblin, and he's very, very tiny, and can you... Can you put me down, please? I... don't know if I want to yet. Then he we is an enemy. To, we need no. to catch them, we need to find them, because they stole them, and, and now we're trying to find them, and that's why we... They must have come through here. Did you see them? Can you tell us which way they went? That just kind of blinks at you with wide eyes and uh, then it's kind of like mouth and the, the teeth start to like go back behind what looks like lips and uh, the thing like uh, cracks as if it's cracking its neck 
and it like stands up and like you can see it's got like kind of legs that like it pulls out of the ground as everything like the ground gets tore up a bit and the entire canopy above shakes a bit and uh, you can see as it moves and obviously the huge canopy around it moves the tree line the circle moves back in response to this thing as if it's giving it space so <laughs> You find that when you look behind you, you're not in the tree line anymore, that there's just more clearing behind you and the trees seem to have moved mm -hmm. back. <laughs> um, some of the other trees are shuffled up next to each other as if we have backed the hell away from this thing. <laughs> and uh, it says, People don't normally come into my woods, my forest, this is my place. And you come in here hacking at me with your swords. Yeah, that was him. He's a bit of an idiot. Sorry about that. We're just actually looking for a child. Did you see somebody come through here? We're we're trying to find them, and I don't know why he started attacking you, but we we actually just want to find the child, the child, the baby. Did you see them? You're all children to me. How am I, I supposed to tell you cool. apart? Yeah, but a much tinier one. Yeah, so you step you know, forward like, as well. And if my my arms are are free, I'll just be gesturing, just how you know, like yay big. And it just kind of like narrows its eyes at you, and it kind of shakes <laughs> the branch a bit, so you kind of get like jostled a little oh. bit. Yeah, nausea. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, so Kitty, Kitty walks forward. Sorry. I take a step forward. I bow and offer my sincere apologies to you. Um, it, my my companion here isn't aware of your kind. Um, he's he's a bit. Gun ho, as we'll say, or gung ho, however they mm. how you actually say that. Sword ho. Um, sword ho. We're the adversaries. He's a ho. Cavill is definitely a sword ho. <laughs> um, there is many lack of it. This one is mine. <laughs> is there anything we can do to repay the the damage done to you, sir? Sir Tree. And then... Do you have a name? Is it Mark? Oh, <laughs> uh, how much I want to call this thing Mark. <laughs> it's, called, it's called Beard Tree. So it shakes the uh, the branch again, and then uh, it says, Your apology, elf, is well received. And then it drops uh, Sibylla. Do you want to defy danger, Sibylla, with either... Yeah. Con or Dex. Okay. This is for how you land. Yeah, yeah, I figured. Let me just figure out which one's better. Probably <laughs> my con. Yeah. I'd also like to note that as I bowed, my wolf also bowed as well at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dog's not daft. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's why Doug doesn't go in and attack things straight away. Mm. Doggy see, doggy do? <laughs> yeah. Take note, if Doug does not run forward and attack, do not run forward and attack. <laughs> right, give me a second, Sybilla, to have a look at your character sheet for you. Okay. I am okay. assuming control. I assume that's what you are doing and not my computer, just to do <laughs> stuff on it. Right, so your staff or your antitoxin, one of them breaks when you land? Um, I actually think that I have... Um, what are you looking for? I don't know why I thought I had extra antitoxin. Right, so, your antitoxin's up here, at the very top. Yeah. So either that breaks, or your staff breaks. I think I'll let the antitoxin break. Okay. I guess. So I don't you, even know. So as you land, you hear the... I mean, I have daggers, so I'm not just relying on the staff. So the staff's you... not magical, is it? It is a staff. It is just a staff. Okay, I'll right. let the staff break. Fuck it. Yeah, sure. I'll just start using a brat. Well, obviously not one of his, but like, <laughs> a random dead branch. I just find on slowly the cutting really the branch the off while he's talking to you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you don't need this one, right? <laughs> so, you fall. We hear the crunch of the branch snapping in, or like the, the branch, the fucking staff snapping in two. Oh, yeah. 
Um, you can just write broken in two um, on the yeah. details because you're welcome to keep the parts of it if you want or you can just delete it if you don't yeah. want to carry it with you. Um, but yeah, you fall, smack, crush, bang. Um, but that pretty much broke your fall, so you are you are good for that. I'll be like, no! <laughs> and then it kind of like, again, does that thing where it looks like it's just like kind of rolling its shoulders back, but really it's like the whole entire canopy like shakes and various like birds and stuff like zoom away from the where they were clearly trying to like nest as this <laughs> thing's like standing up properly now. No, I'll very gingerly be taking up the two pieces of the the staff. staff staff and I'll be like almost like you know putting them together but obviously you can't fix yeah. them. And I'm like, oh. And you like I wonder if a healing spell would do but obviously like just yeah. like talking to herself not really actually doing it right now. And then um, the the entity. I'm still trying to remember all the things you asked it in one go there. So I think you asked it its name as well. Do you have a name? Yeah. Like you said. And it looks. Okay. And it says, None that your tongue ever bothered to learn to pronounce. Okay. And it blinks. Just nod. Like, okay. Fair enough. Again, what brings you to my forest? You mentioned the wayward child. Yeah, it's a little green thing, pointy ears. Um, it's been taken by... Stolen. People, did you say? Three? Well, there were at least two because it was plural, but... Yeah, there's a bunch of people. Maybe like four-ish? Don't know. She didn't really get a look. She mostly got jumped. Yeah, it's true. Um, yeah, it, this this creature was taken from our group. Um, I was wondering if you've seen any groups of people through here, apart from us. It kind of blinks, but it, when it blinks, it blinks like one eye first and then the other eye. And <laughs> then um, it kind of just stares. Its mouth's always kind of lying half open, as if it's not paying attention. And... Uh, it says, no, I don't see many people in my forest, but there has been travelers through here. I have felt them as they step. It blinks both eyes again separately. Okay, um, are they still within your forest? And he kind of like, as if he's looking up to the canopy, and blinks more, just as if thinking, I guess. And there's just a solid minute of silence. <laughs> Do you do anything? <laughs> the three people from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> 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 so are they deciding what if we're, if we're hobbitses? <laughs> it's like, yeah, they are hobbitses. <laughs> God damn it. We have decided you are not oxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But yeah, <laughs> we lost the entwives. <laughs> How do you lose them? <laughs> um, but yeah. I have a feeling like while we're waiting for the tree to respond, that like the other two are getting a bit restless, and I'm just like, look, you just need to be patient, okay? Before you cause any more damage. Yeah, so what is the other two doing then, right? So we've got, like, d like does uh, Sibylla go back to the group? Kind of. Huddle, as it were. Oh yeah. Um, and not showing my back to this creature. I'm kind of like walking with like backwards. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, like you're leaving royalty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, what about Cavill? And scary things. That's cool. Cavill staring at the tree. Okay. He's just very annoyed that it hit him. He's like, to to him, <laughs> to me even. It's an enemy. <laughs> you hit him first. Like I just hear you muttering like that he hit me. And I'm like, you can shut up. Just cracking my uh, my hand against my like my helmet and just like I wanna hit it again. Don't you dare. 
I <laughs> just like the wolf just stares and growls like grr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dog is probably looking between like everyone when they talk and then just growls at you when you like give him a like a dirty look. It just knows to growl <laughs> at people when you do that. <laughs> and um after like that solid like minute of just awkward silence where you hear like again the wildlife I guess of the forest mm. as opposed to him and he says they have just left the outer edge of the forest okay um, could you point us in the direction of that and we will leave you be will you be bringing more to my forest don't intend to, good sir, um, or good, good wood tree person. Good wood. Good wood. <laughs> How did you know his name? I thought you couldn't pronounce it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> good wood, but, the tree. Uh, I will tell people to avoid your forest. No. To... Please. There must be a blood sacrifice. A okay. child. Could we bring someone back to you for a blood sacrifice? And it kind of blinks both eyes separately again. And then it's like mouth creaks like old wood. And then it kind of like smirks almost. And I kind of halfway where you see it's not actually smirking, it's just lifting itself into like a smile it's very slowly. So one yeah. side goes up and then the other side goes up. <laughs> and it looks like it's slightly less like angry or dozy looking. And then it says, Bring an offering to my roots as replenishment, nourishment for my wounds. And it's looking as directly as it can at Cavill. <laughs> if you do this, I will point you in the direction they travelled. Oh, you want them now, damn it. And it blinks once twice. If I did not get this nourishment now... How do I know you would come back after you have what you want? Parley with it. I you can't don't parley with it. I don't say, have. Yeah, what's your leverage? Yeah. Mm. Like, just treating like, things. If anything, it. it's parlayed with you, right? It's when, yeah. cool, get me some blood. We are cool. Does it, does it just need blood? I mean, it's had blood sacrifice, right? Does it want a life? Actually, yeah. tree, you require a life, but just some blood. Blood is the life of your kind, yes. All of my would all of my body you would need. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> 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 um, or do you just require a bit of blood? And it kind of blinks one eye, and then eventually the other. And its dozy look passes, and it says, You must bring me a complete sacrifice. If you are to be the sacrifice, that is acceptable. I will not trade my life, but I will fit you many of us if you wish yeah, it kind of again as if looking up at the canopy just looks back at you like it had just realised you're still there and <laughs> it says you will bring me the sacrifice and I will point you away from here towards what you seek and blinks again hmm. I, I look at Kitty and go when you must find a deer. I hear those are expensive. <laughs> We're in a the forest. They're quite dear. <laughs> Would a deer suffice? It's just kind of staring at you with its mouth open and a bit of like tree sap just slowly drips out of its like mouth hole. <laughs> It doesn't respond. Okay, and then, um, I was thinking that trees would be, you know, needing sunshine and water and... Blood. Blood is water. 
Blood is the life force. All right, I'm going to hunt and track with my dog yeah. to find a deer. Yeah, cool. Go for it. <laughs> so that's an eight. Yeah, cool. So you head off. Does everybody follow with you or are you doing this like on your own? I'll do this on my own. Can't guarantee those two will be quiet. <laughs> what are the other two doing while she's off looking for a deer? Staring at the tree. It, it hurts and I me. Can't, and I'm trying to wrap my head around the fact that, you know, there's a massive, massive tree that wants blood instead of, you know, water and sunshine right. and all the nice and cool things in life that plants usually want. In this artificially made forest, right? Wait, hang on. Well, It doesn't seem to want to be touched by the tree yeah my blade has um absorbed blood can i like do you want to give up your blade possibly i don't want to give up my blade but i wish to uh see if my blade would release said blood and i will feed it more later so i try and commune with your blade yes okay let's see i feel like this will be hmm what would it be Let's see if there's a move that fits this, if it's not just a roll. So... Let's have a look at, let's see if there's anything special that fits this. Nah, so realistically it's probably something like... You could really stretch the definition of defy danger, right? I guess. Yeah, because I think talking to like a possessed sword's probably, probably dangerous. dangerous. Yeah, so do you want to do a defy danger with wisdom? I guess. Yep. Add my XP. Did you? Did you do bad? <laughs> I added XP. <laughs> cool. Right. Um, how do you commune with your sword? I sit down and put the sword on my lap and put both hands on the blade and just close my eyes. Trying to speak in like speak in my head. Mm -hmm. Hoping that my thoughts travel to my blade. Yeah, and I think the forest kinda takes on a more ethereal quality, like so it kinda like falls away. Like you close your eyes, you sit there, you're aware of like the trees surrounding you and whatnot, and then you close your eyes, you kind of the kind of wind vanishes and you open them and everything's kind of black but all the trees have that kind of weird white ethereal outline except the one in the middle and that just seems to be black and there's a figure in kind of like wispy white in front of you you can barely make them out um, but you are very familiar with them in the sense of you've maybe never seen them before maybe this is the first time you've done this but you know it to be the blade right yeah. And you can tell there is a tension between the two of you. Like when you aren't looking forward to seeing somebody because you know there's a lot of awkwardness. Like there's that that hits you in this place. Um, and it doesn't so much speak, but you hear it and understand it. I, and it says. Why have you come here? And it's got an angry tone to it. I wish to bury blood. So what is it you say to it? I wish to bury blood. You wish to borrow my blood. How dare you come here and demand of me? Give your own blood. You've taken a lot of blood. Yes, that is correct. I have taken a lot of blood. It is With mine. It belongs to me. You belong to me. I took my head at it. It's girl. You would never have this blood without me. You can feel it smirk. The arrogance it just comes off this thing in waves. It's kind of like almost spectre-like form in the middle, where it's like you can tell, like it is like humanoid, right? Like you can see, it's got like clearly what goes into like leg-like 
soft structure, arm, sort of head, but everything's too vague to really see, all like white wispy lines. And uh, it says, You're nothing without me. I look at it and go, That may be true. But you are nothing without me. Who would wield you if I wasn't here? No one. There is always someone to wield what they wish to become. And how long would, would you have waited? And there's just one big laugh and like one big ha huh, that kind of echoes through this kind of weird spirit forest that you're in. And it says, Time is irrelevant to me, mortal. I will take that as a no and leave for now. And then as you, like, it's kind of half you kind of pulling your head out of water, but at the same time half you're being pushed out, right? Um, quite violently. And yeah, take a d4 of damage that you cannot mitigate with a armor because it's in your head or <laughs> it's all in your head yeah so that happens it's in your head Zombie. and Zombie. yeah i got it I, we're with you and uh the sword was sitting on your lap wasn't it yes were you your were your hands on it or were they yeah they were on it yeah and like as you kind of come to this, you realise that the blade is too hot to touch, and you kind of have to get it off your lap really quickly. Okay, just kind of like jump away and pick it back up by its handle. Yeah, it's too hot to touch. Okay, I'm just going to look at it and wait. Yeah, and I think we've just got this scene of like it kind of like sizzling on the ground a little, with you kind of staring at it. Um, meanwhile, hunting and dragging. Uh, yeah, you come up across a deer, you find one. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you wanna... I don't really see like you need to do much, I think you can probably just hunt it, right? I, I don't see that there needs to be a roll for this or anything. You can just kill a deer and yeah. drag it back. It's just a bit yeah. of time it takes, um, Yeah. to be honest. So maybe about half an hour. Yeah, there's probably a, a good bit of time. Um, what about Sibylla? Is Sibylla doing anything while the, the elf goes off to go hunt a deer and he starts meditating with his sword i'll be keeping my distance from that tree now because it's you know uh it it obviously doesn't want to be fine yeah and i think like it's staring between you and a uh, cavil but and it's bloodthirsty that's weird and it's not looking at any of you it's looking at the path that kitty would have taken back through the forest and it's just staring with this mouth kind of droopy at one side with a bit of like tree mm -hmm. sap just slowly going down its kind of trunk and it hasn't really moved since as like maybe you just kind of pace up and down walk back and forth yeah. or hold your staff in bits I'll, I'll probably be like you know asking from a distance and be like were you always a tree and it kind of like blinks its eyes and slowly turns its look to you and says I have been a tree for as long as I have been a tree. <laughs> and that has been a very long time. How long have you not been a tree? And I'll tell him, like, well, I'm not a tree, I'm a human, and I'm 23 years old. That's not... I wasn't asking how long you've been a tree, I was asking if you have always been a tree. But, oh wow. And it just blinks the eyes independently of each other. And then it says, If I was something before I was a tree, would it matter now that I am a tree? Well, it might. I mean, our pasts matter. And I don't know. Were you always here, or 
did you used to be somewhere else? And it blinks again, and it like creaks and moans and groans, and it's uh, it kind of like almost as if it like turns and angles its shoulders a different direction, and it points one of its kind of branchy hands. And it says, <laughs> "I used to be over there." It just points vaguely into the forest. Oh, why'd you move? Did you not like that spot anymore? Too many people. Oh, you did say you don't like people. No. I I'm like sorry people. about that. You do! People oh, don't good. like me. Well, you picked me up and then put me down in a way that made me break my staff, so... I don't know, do you do that to everybody? Did you ask permission before you took that wood to make your tools? I didn't make it myself, it was a gift, but... A gift I didn't from know a thief. Permission should be... Take. I, I did not know trees spoke before. If I would known that, I would have asked for permission. I've never met a talking tree before. You've never met, sorry, or what? A talking tree before. But you are talking. Are you the only one of your kind? And what kind is that? You just tell me. You. I've not I, seen I think this is when trees. I. This is probably when Kitty like, heads back with this <laughs> deer. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, you know, yeah. talking semantics with the tree. <laughs> and, well, Cavill's probably in the half of the sword, right? So, yeah. It's total love. Yeah, right. And this, this tree's just talking nonsense with that, like, Sibylla. Be like, well, what am I then? And you're like, that's <laughs> what I'm asking you, bruh. <laughs> um, so yeah, okay, like, you head back and you just see... Sibylla chatting away this tree and Cavill looking down angry at his sword. Oh no, what's been going on? <laughs> just dragging the deer. I'm just through. staring at my sword, just like angrily looking down at it like. Mm. It angrily okay. lies there, I guess. <laughs> Well, with the help of Dog, mm -hmm. like, we drag the deer carcass to the tree, mm -hmm. um, give a bow, like, is does this satisfy? Sp and back off. Spill its blood over my roots, please. I take a dagger out, I guess. Have I got a dagger? What is my... If not, you can have mine for a little while. Yeah, like, either way, if, you're, if you've got one of our... Like, Sibylla gives you it either way. You get yeah. the tiger in. Oh, right. Yeah. And I, I slit the deer's throat. Cool. And you just, like, pour the blood over its roots. Yeah. And you just hear, like, this creaking noise as if, like, the entire tree's, like, twisting and shaking and bending. And, uh, it just lets out a big sigh of, like, clearly, like, relief. And it's like, ah. Oh. It's been a while since I've eaten. And it blinks both eyes at the same time and looks at you, its mouth closed tight. And it says, Will you bring more if I have more to offer? Of course. And its eyes get narrower. Good. But something Alive next time. Kill it in front of me. Okay, I ain't kink shaming, but alright. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I don't actually say that. And the tree's like, what is this kink shaman? <laughs> kink shaman? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it like stares at you almost hungrily, right? And then it says, our agreement, though, 
and it like cracks one of its branches over like a ha- like a hand stretched pointing mm. off kind of it would be I guess like northwest at this point really like heading kind of behind the mountain um, yeah that points that way and says your quarry ran off this way many footsteps hurried scared hmm thank you for the information I give a bow and I turn in the direction he pointed and scoot the other two like come on come on the sword is too hot. Is it still too hot? I don't know. We go down to be go touch it. Yeah, I think there's like one last like hiss from it. And then uh, you get the impression that it's like, yeah, fine, okay, let's go. <laughs> 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 right. Um so you can pick it back up. Yes. Pick it back up, it's fine. Let's go. I love that you say that, even though they can see you doing it. Like I love that. It's brilliant. Yeah, so like you just head off. Um you head to the edge of the the woods as per the crazy tree. And um yeah, you just get there and it seems like you're heading to once you get through this part of the woods, there's like a hedge maze and a tower. Right? So at the centre of this hedge maze is this tall, tall tower made of like what looks like really expensive stonework. Yeah. And uh, I think we'll end it there. Okay. Yeah. So let's do our end of session, shall we? So well. we are at the end of the session, so let's go from top to bottom. Bonds. Cavill, any bonds that came up? No. Oh, cool. Uh, Sibylla. Um, any I bonds? don't think anything is is has changed or. Um, it's okay. If they're still in play. They're still in play. That's fine. I think. I mean, one second, because Yeah, I mean, I don't think we've expanded on any of these, so they're still the way they were. Yeah. And Kitty? Yeah, I'm still, like, I mean, the one with Cavill. Cavill? Mm -hmm. Cavill. Yeah. It's, they do not understand life in the wild, so I will teach them. I think this is a teaching moment. Don't just attack nature, because it will attack you back. I mean, yeah, I feel like you maybe have to do more to get them on board oh, with it yeah. though if that makes sense to yeah. resolve it but yeah I would say you're definitely like on the right path like, yeah. like maybe taking him away and teaching him how to hunt the deer would have been good as well right yeah um, but so far so good I'd say like don't attack trees that speak back to you yeah that's a good idea yeah, um, yeah I'd say you're definitely working on that I think if that goes somewhere yeah we can resolve that and move on yeah so nothing yet but we'll we'll see how that develops and right alignment cavil I mean, I stabbed the tree, but... What does your alignment say? Kill a defenseless or surrendered enemy. The tree is not defenseless. You, either. Did, you, you didn't kill it either, so... True. Good point. <coughs> yep. Um, Sibylla, your alignment. Good. Um, I mean, I don't think I've done anything bad. What did it say? Is it, what's your... Well, Your phrase? It does say use magic to directly aid another. So you've not done that. So you don't no, achieve your alignment. Really. And no. it's very like it's so straightforward for these questions. And then yeah, Kitty, I guess. alignment. Yep, I did mine. Help an animal or spirit of the wild. Yeah, you did. You helped a spirit mm. of the wild. Yeah. Yep. That's one point of XP you can add to your pile. <laughs> yep. And right, so did we learn something new and important about the world? Yes, we did. What did you learn? We learned not to attack things without just cause. I mean, that is more of a moral thing, right? I was kind of thinking more that there's a, <laughs> a, a weird artificial place called Thickwood with a creepy ass blood hungry tree in the middle of it. Yeah. Right? I would say that that would count, right? Um, yeah. And that 
as I said, primarily the thick wood is here, and it was artificially made. Weird. Mm. Uh, right, okay. So everybody gets a point of XP for that. Did yeah. that boop, boop. And did we overcome a notable monster or enemy? I mean, we didn't die to the tree, but we didn't kill it. But It says overcome, yeah. so it doesn't yeah. say kill. Like, you, you successfully negotiated, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'd say you get XP for I that. I successfully Yay. negotiated. Yeah. Mark no the, mark the tree was planted. happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mark the tree. Um, mark the tree. <laughs> and did we loot a memorable treasure? I don't think so. No. 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 So that's only one bit of XP. Yeah. How'd you mean? Sorry. Because oh, we only came, overcame the enemy, didn't we? Oh, notable. Enemy or monster. Did you just zone out there when we were talking about this? So you learned something new and interesting about the world. Oh yeah, okay. Remember that conversation we had about the whole thick wood being a thing of artificialness and the fact yeah. that you learned there's a creepy ass tree in the middle of it? I ain't had a coffee today. That's a, this is why I'm zoning today. <laughs> and then uh, obviously we overcame the tree problem. Yeah, two bits. Yeah, right, so two from that. Anything from... I think only Sophie got one from the... Uh, Alignment, and nobody did anything yep. on their bonds, and it's going to be even interest more interesting when we add in Scott to the mix for bonds. So, what okay. is your total XP now, Callum? Nine. Oh, so if you take some time, you could level up at some point. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes. So you need to do that within the game, though. Uh, so you need to do that on camera, as it were. Uh, sadly, because it needs to be as a move within the game. Also, it's fine. I have a, I already have a plot point for how uh, Cabal will take time. To do this. That's because maybe having a, a wee heart to heart with your sword. Um, that's the that's the plan. Yup. Uh, Adrian, what have you got? Adrian, even eight. Eight. Yep. So you're you're good to level up at some point soon as well. Oh, and oh. Sophie. I have it as well. Nice. So you can all essentially hit level two as soon as you get a couple of like some hours or days, a uh, downtime. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Good, nice. Word. Have a look when you can before the next session. What you get for a level up, right? So the whole level up move, read it over, start to finish. It's very all the words are important. And that and have a think about what you're likely to do because it'll be done on camera. So we'll do that relatively swiftly. And each class in your little class cheat sheet will have advanced moves listed as well. And um, so that'll give you new stuff. Which is kind of awesome. Um, for example, if the cleric decided to take camouflage as an advanced move, you when you keep still in natural surroundings, enemies never spot you until you make movement, which is a really cool move. Or <laughs> another one is wild empathy. You can speak with and understand animals. Um, the ranger has a specific one, which is half elven. You need to take it as your first advancement. Or you don't get to take it ever again because the whole point of it is you were always half elven. Um, oh. And it lets you take the other racial move. So you get to be, you have the human starting move and the ra like the elven move for a ranger. Um, if you pick half elven, uh, just to fully Aragon up your character. But yeah. that's up to you if you wanted to do that or not. You don't need to. It's just one of those moves that is like, it may only be taken as your first advancement, which would be. Yeah. On your next level up. But there's some damn good ones. There's some really, really good ones for them all. There's a secondary list, so that's from two to five, the first list of advanced moves. The second list of advanced moves says when you gain from level six to ten, you can't pick them yet. But you might want to have mm. a look at them because some of them have prerequisites. Like if it says re Hunter's Prey replaces Familiar Prey, which means you need to have Familiar's Prey for it to be replaceable. Um, oh, okay. But yeah, there's some damn good moves damn good advanced moves and that's how you level up in the system. You'll get a stat okay. point to spend as well and obviously if you put that into your health, your health will go up by one point which is nice. Stats can only go to an 18 which is the highest it can be and that is a plus 3 when they hit 18 yeah. which is nice. Was um, that when you, did you say that's when you put a point into constitution you get plus 1 HP? If you do that, yeah. All that's explained in the level up move. What do you want to call this session before we boost? The blood tree. The blood tree? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 sorry. Thick wood with two C's. 
Just <laughs> okay. So just thick wood. Blood tree at the thick wood. <laughs> uh, blood tree at the thick wood. Sure, let's call it blood tree at the thick wood. Let's go for that. And you end with a mysterious tower and a weird fucking gen. Like what you call it? <laughs> Labyrinth thing of hedge mage. That's it. A hedge maze. Mm. I couldn't even say that. Well, guys, I, yeah. How did you find that session? That was fun. It's just nonsense, isn't it? I love silly. it. It's so nonsense. Mark the fucking blood tree. Um, <laughs> brilliant. Oh, I love it. Also, I mean, I love how it's like, cool, give them a baby goblin. Yay, we've got a baby goblin. We don't really want this. Okay, I take it away. We should probably go get it back. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, because, well, there's because we involved. wanted it to be... To be safe like that's i would have given it to somebody to be safe mm -hmm. but then these guys take it from me and apparently they like there's a ransom for it as well i mean if the ransom is from its family surely we should get it <laughs> and also i love that it was the line um we have the chosen one let's go get, uh, let's go so we can get paid yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's so good oh dear cool can't wait to catch scott up on this nonsense as well because <laughs> like it just, it's going to get wilder. You just know that, right? It's just going to get wilder. <laughs> oh, wilder. yeah. I love it. Um, also, I'm really enjoying the, the secret side quest that seems to be uh, Cavill and his swords relationship issues. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Like, don't attack it's, the child. It's okay. a woman, essentially. Um, Wait, is that sexist? It is, yeah. Pretty bad. Yeah. I, I, re I retract that statement. It's, um, it's a partnership problem. There you go. It's a partnership problem. You and your partner are having progression difficulties and uh, they need resolved. So maybe you need some kind of um, blacksmith slash counsellor for a, you know, resolving the issues you're maybe having. Maybe a dark lord. <laughs> yes, to consummate the... Nope, nope, not that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, anyway guys, uh, that was fun and nonsense. Thanks for playing and goodbye. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.